What's going on you guys? This is your boy RBG bringing you another video on Transformers Rise of the Beast. Crazy I know considering the fact that this movie has been out of theaters for quite some time and we now have access to it on all the different streaming platforms. But you guys already know how we do. The hype train never stops and I thought it would be an excellent time to get into a good discussion pertaining to my boy Optimus Prime. If you read by the title, I want to talk about something that's been going on with this character that kind of presents a dark precedent for him. As you know, Optimus Prime, even though he is the most noble and stoic character in the Transformers franchise. All these later iterations, particularly in the movies, have been presenting him in a dark fashion and I just want to talk about something pertaining to this character that could prove to be divisive amongst the fan base. so stay tuned. Now before we get into the gist of this video, I want to remind you of today's sponsor, Mech Arena. Do you ever just get into your mech and wonder, hmm, what's this all about? Where am I headed? The answer to that, my friends, is the League Divisions. Mech Arena is a killer mech shooter that's super easy to get into, but there are a few things to do straight away so you can really see what the game has to offer. And the first thing is Progress Division 9. That'll unlock more things for you to do in the game, such as tournaments, 5v5 deathmatches, and free-for-all mode. What's the division, you ask? Well, it's one of the first ways you'll progress in Mech Arena win matches and you'll earn ranking points. Earn enough ranking points and you'll go up a division. Like I feel like I'm playing with purpose when I take my mech on the battlefield. And in fact I actually am. Because right now we're giving away skins for free via gameplay. After that we're introducing an epic sci-fi themed event. Breaking spectacular new maps and the chain gun which is a new heavy duty weapon. The Scorpius an attacker mech with a powerful javelin array ability and a new heavy duty pilot with an awesome unique look. So why wouldn't you want to indulge in this mech mayhem? man jump in it right now you can do so by installing the game via my link or scanning this QR code it's free to play on Android iOS and the PC and if you use my link you'll get bonuses worth $30 we're talking one skin one prodigy crate and 5,000 credits to help kickstart your game so what are you waiting for jump on that deal right now if you're quick enough you can add me as one of your friends and we can play some matches together good luck and I'll see you on the battlefield so about my boy Optimus Prime, aka Robo Jesus. If you aren't aware, Transformers Bumblebee and Rise of the Beast serve as brand new slates for this iteration of the character and I can't be any more happier but just seeing certain things happen really has me on edge. Now it's no secret that Michael Bay's iteration of this character hasn't really rubbed a lot of fans the right way. On one side you have those fans who absolutely love the more aggressive nature of this character compared to his G1 counterpart. He doesn't necessarily mind taking any Decepticon heads and faces, especially if they try to harm the ones that he cares for. Many fans have come to the defense of this approach saying that this is a more realistic aspect that they enjoy about the film franchise. They insist that any character that's been thrusted into war and seen many of their colleagues be slain by their enemies would go mad and seek out retribution and I honestly agree with this sentiment like this version of Optimus it seems like as the series progressed Bay Optimus became more violent in his pursuits and he threw diplomacy out of the window. If you went into the first film like me you felt like he could have been a little more aggressive especially when fighting his longtime enemy Megatron. He was getting straight up served and it took a human in order to save him and I didn't quite like that. It felt like a lot of people didn't like that. A lot of fans felt like Optimus should have been on equal footing with Megatron as opposed to it being a one sided battle. And I can't help but feel like Michael Bay took those words to heart because what we got in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen was a far cry from what we got in the first entry. As soon as he hits the ground landing after hitting that epic entrance we see him slay Demolisher. But this time it's not because he's being attacked by a Decepticon. He does this because Demolisher delivers a message to him that rubs him the wrong way. The fallen shall rise again. Not today. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I really didn't think anything of this upon my initial viewing of this movie, but going back and looking at it, I felt a little sorry for Demolisher. Even though this is a giant destructive Decepticon, he was for the most part minding his own business. He was just trying to stay out of sight and out of mind. And here we go with the Autobots and Ness just waking this guy up and giving chase to him. You could argue that he was causing a lot of collateral damage and that's why they needed to get rid of him, but at the end of the day, he was trying to avoid the Autobots. He was running. He wasn't necessarily the aggressor. And then you have him be shot in the face because Optimus doesn't like the words that he said. Fast forward an hour and a half later and we see that brutality continue in one of the most epic fights in all of cinematic history. The forest fight. 
Now here is where I had to come at the defense of Optimus Prime because to be fair he wasn't looking to kill anyone in this particular fight scene. He was trying to escape with Sam with Wiki and he was forced to do battle with three Decepticons making it a handicap match. And as you'd expect this is a very one sided battle until Optimus got his face mask knocked off causing him to go into savage mode. It was pretty much do or die at this point. We see Optimus put in work by stabbing Megatron in the leg and kicking the Dorito shaped Starscream right in the chin. But the biggest highlight of that fight would have to be when he decides to put an end to Grindor who for whatever reason gets confused with Blackout. I don't know what to tell you guys, they're two different characters, but hey, that's besides the point. Optimus Prime proceeds to sink his hot Energon hooks right into the Decepticon's face, leaving him with a permanent smile of death. And once again, I didn't really have a problem with this one and for the most part I still don't because hey, they were trying to kill Optimus, but once again I can't help but feel a little bit sympathetic for this character because for one, when he's getting killed, even though you can't necessarily understand what he's saying when he's screaming out in pain, from what I heard he's saying, please Prime, please no, as Optimus starts to do an epic unboxing on his face. <laughs> I can't help but feel like the G1 Optimus would have stopped as soon as he heard this because he's a more merciful character. But once again, this makes it abundantly clear that this is a realistic setting and had Optimus been easier on Grindor, he probably would have got killed by the same robot that he showed mercy to. Everything feels brutal and over the top. And look, I get that lethal force is necessary in war, but this version of Optimus is way extra about it. I will kill you! Defend my family. Or die. This lesson could be your very last. If you threaten my life one more time today, I'm in my car and I'm off home. Most of the fights don't feel heroic and he executes characters like he's in a Mortal Kombat simulation. In some moments it seems like he's actually enjoying killing these characters. For example when he's fighting the Fallen and he has him on the back of his feet, we see him execute the Decepticon founder by taking his face, something that would become very synonymous with this version of Optimus Prime. And it's not necessarily that move because we've seen him do that before, like I just mentioned that he did it with Grindor, but it's what he says when he takes the Fallen's face. It's almost like he was enjoying it. And I can't stress this enough, I understand that things are on the line, the stakes are high and humanity is on the brink of death at the hands of the fallen. Like it's one thing to have a hero that values life but he's constantly forced to take it, but it's another thing to entirely have a hero who takes sadistic pleasure in ending his enemies lives and making them suffer. Like I felt like that line was too out of character for Optimus. What he should have said was you forfeit the name of Prime when you slaughter your brothers or something along that line. It's not necessarily how how he executes these enemies that I have a problem with, it's just the things that he says. It's totally excusable to annihilate something that's trying to do the same to you. For example, right, like in the War for Cybertron trailer we see him cut a Decepticon in half but he doesn't gloat about it or acts like he's enjoying the fact that he killed this monster, he just proceeds on into battle. And another example I would like to give is in the film prior to this, Transformers 07. When we see Optimus Prime fight Bone Crusher, Bone Crusher is trying to kill him and in return Optimus cuts his head off, but we don't hear him say I rise, you fall, or thanks for giving me your face. He's quickly and effectively dispatching an enemy out of necessity. That's the Prime that we are familiar with, a character that would do the dirty work but he doesn't relish in the moment. And that's essentially what we saw in Bumblebee. We saw Optimus taking out all these different seeker bots but not really just relishing in their actual death. It felt like a return to true form for him and I couldn't wait to see what they were going to do with him in later installments. Fast forward 5 years later and we kind of see that this version of Optimus is going down a similar path to his former cinematic counterpart. I'm going to take back Scourge's key and then take off his head. Even though this is his second movie appearance in this new live action continuity, he has this very disgruntled personality and just very angry nature about him. 
And he's this way because he's been away from Cybertron and he eagerly wants to get back but he can't so he's frustrated. But it feels so out of place and unnecessary because it hasn't really been that long since he's been on Earth. It's only been 7 years. So it doesn't really make any sense why he's so hostile against the human characters such as Noah. Especially given the fact that Bumblebee has already vouched for the humans showing that they actually can be effective in aiding them. But minor gripes aside, I don't think this Prime is much as an aggressor as the previous one we got. And I feel like some of his epic lines he delivers stays true to the core of who Optimus Prime is. Like when he rips off Scourge's head and says time to show you the real power of a Prime. Which is a response to what Scourge said earlier being that Primus would be disappointed in Optimus Prime. So yeah, for the most part this version of Optimus Prime still remains intact to what we know him to be in the G1 and other source material. But apparently this character was going to be a lot more darker than what we got. Potentially exceeding the darker tone we got in the Bayverse. A few weeks back we got some deleted scenes, one of which consisted of a Decepticon who didn't quite make the cut. In this one particular clip we see a brutal bout between Optimus Prime and a bus called Transit. You can tell that this is going to be the first act because it's very reminiscent of what we saw in Transformers 07 where we see the stars and stuff like that and you hear Optimus Prime giving this narration. He talks about how he had to leave the planet of Cybertron and now he's desperate to get back. Except this time instead of being prey at the hands of the Decepticons, they now have to become hunters. Which instantly gives off this dark vibe that kind of makes it feel like deja vu all over again. We see Optimus look for this Decepticon as he threatens to kill him if he doesn't reveal the whereabouts of his ship so they can escape back to Cybertron. Give it up. And I will not destroy you. The clip then proceeds to go into this big slugfest that has these animations that vary from preliminary to nearly complete. After the fight ends and Transit reveals that they destroyed the ship and that Optimus Prime would never be able to escape this miserable planet, Optimus blasts the bus Decepticon smooth through the chest. So yeah, as you hear this is a very dark scene and if you ask me it was very reminiscent of what we got in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen where Demolisher tells Optimus that the Fallen will rise again and Optimus responds by shooting him in the face. It's not necessarily the prime we know but he's not completely enshrouded in darkness. But apparently if this scene would have gone on longer it would have been darker than anything that the Bayverse ever produced. Apparently the scene was supposed to end with Prime killing Transit and dumping him into the Hudson River where he would join dozens of other Decepticon corpses slain by the legendary Autobot leader. The director Stephen Kappel Jr. explained when they screened it to people they were like damn this is kind of dark. He responded saying that it was kind of dark but he thought it was a movie he wanted to make but then he started to realize it is dark and it felt a little darker than what he wanted it to be so he pulled back on it. That in my honest opinion was the right decision to make. While Optimus does have every right to kill the Decepticon that tried to attack him, it would be a bad look if he drew his weapon and executed Transit because he didn't like something that Transit said to him. And I don't think having an iconic character who's supposed to be a beacon of hope kill countless waves of Decepticons and leave their bodies at the bottom of a river would be fitting in any type of way for his character. Even though the producers haven't necessarily pulled the trigger and made Optimus this extreme, I can't help but feel like we'll actually get there and it'll be way more harsher than what we got in the Bayverse. Because Rise of the Beast didn't necessarily do that well at the theaters. It recently surpassed 400 million worldwide against a production budget of 195 to 200 million which doesn't include the promotions and is considered a box office disappointment and the lowest grossing installment in the franchise. And after seeing this I wouldn't be surprised if Paramount Pictures is desperately trying to find the right formula to make these movies a success they once were. Even if it means pulling the trigger and making Optimus this full on murderous robot that people see as cool. But anyways that's all I got for you guys today. I just want to let you guys know that I have no problem with these characters killing because that's the name of the game especially when it comes to war. But I do think this sets a dark precedent to what this character could become in later sequels. I don't think fans are quite ready to see this dark and sinister version of Prime let alone see anything that mirrors that of what we got in the Bayverse. Hopefully if we do see that they build up to it properly. But anyways that's all I got for you guys today. What are your thoughts on this? Do you feel like we're going down that dark route where we see Prime commit heinous acts of murder against the Decepticons or potentially humans? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always I asked you to like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed this video it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on all the different social media outlets. Sharing is caring. 
Once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. You